My name's Chris Turner and um, I work at ARM. I'm a um, marketing director in our CPU group and I uh, look after uh, some of the advanced technologies that are coming onto our roadmap in the near future. So now it's 26 year anniversary of ARM LTD, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what were you doing uh, back then and 26 years ago? Well, as a matter of fact, I wasn't at ARM right then, um, although I was at Acorn Computers um, uh, working with the guys who designed the ARM core. Um, and indeed, we worked together before that, uh, putting the um, BBC Micro together, which, which I had a big hand in. Um, uh, we, when the ARM was designed and um, we, we got that up and running, it was a very exciting time, but we were also busy growing the uh, Acorn Computers, of course, and I was doing other things. And then... Um, I went off to the Olivetti Research Laboratories, which uh, you may you may know that Acorn was acquired by the Olivetti PC company, and they had a research lab in town, and I went there, and it was while I was there, I think, that they floated arm out of Acorn, so um, I was across the uh, across the road in another part of Cambridge. So uh, how does it feel like to, to see how uh, like arm uh, being in this industry right now? Uh, so what do you usually tell... Uh, uh, friends and family about uh, what, do you, what do you feel about this because it's uh, well, how many it's 75 billion or 100 billion soon chips well it, 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 re it really is amazing um, I mean a lot it all started with uh, our BBC micro and the success that we had there which of course was a 6502 based computer and the realization that to take the next step we had needed to get into silicon because um, the big chips we were being offered were not not suitable for deployment in schools and, and, and low-cost computing. So that was where the idea to build the ARM, our own processor, came from in the first place. And then, um, you know, it went from there. But we could never have imagined the, 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 the volumes or the penetration that would come from the, uh, the licensing model that Robin Saxby and, and, and his colleagues created around ARM. I mean, it's just fabulous growth. And what I really um, continue to be astonished at is, is how... You know, through my whole career in tech, watching ARM, working with ARM, um, I was also uh, at a fabulous semiconductor company in the 1990s and early 2000s called Verata. We built DSL uh, communications modem chips and we were one of the first companies to market with those, all ARM powered as well. So, you know, I've been a silicon partner in my time and an ecosystem partner. But I just, you know, been doing it all these years and it's still a buzz every day to get up and come and work in technology and there's still new stuff coming all the time which is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So have you been working in ARM uh, all the, a lot of, most of the time since then? Uh, no actually I had a tour of duty at um, a uh, consulting firm in Cambridge, Cambridge Consultants uh, doing some uh, ASIC design work and things of that nature and they had some IP as well and then I was, actually, I was almost considering retirement, and then I got sucked into the vortex that is ARM, as Steve Ferber described it in an email when he um, congratulated me on going to work there, finally, um, about seven years ago. And that was when the company started, you know, this really rapid phase of growth as the, as the whole mobile industry took off very, very quickly, and the, the volume started to shoot up. So that was seven years ago? Yeah. And uh, so what were you doing those seven years? What, uh, what kind oh, of uh, oh, areas here, were you working in? Here, here at ARM? Yeah. Oh, I've been pretty much doing the same stuff all the while. I've been a CPU marketing dude. Um, I, uh, sorry about that expression, the friend yeah. of mine uses it all the time. <laughs> um, I've actually been doing personally a great deal in ARM on the topic of functional safety. Uh, bringing into our products and our design methodologies the necessary um, uh, our IP and, and, and the way we go about designing things to make our products uh, suitable for use in those demanding automotive and robotics applications where you, you have to be sure that you can rely on the technology in order to be certain that, that um, you don't present uh, uh, unacceptable risk to drivers, users, equipment and things, avoidance of, of hazards and so on. And, and that means that you need to design um, uh, uh, processes in a certain way with certain considerations. Uh, and, and actually, you know, I, I guess one of my major accomplishments, with support of course from a, lots of colleagues and a wonderful engineering team, is that um, I was the product manager who um, started the development of a processor that we announced just uh, a few weeks ago, the Cortex-R52, which is the 
the world's most advanced processor for functional safety. So you're going to see that, particularly in cars, controlling braking, controlling steering, um, and um, also acting as a safety, a so-called safety island in uh, vision chips and machine learning chips when they're used in autonomous systems that have to be safe while they function. This is a uh, real-time? Exactly, it's, it, the, it's, the, it's, it's the latest of the Cortex-R real-time processors. When I joined, I picked up product management responsibility for the Cortex-R4, uh, which was already com completed and in the market, and, the, and then I took over the Cortex-R5, which was a development in flight. Then I um, worked on Cortex R7 and R8 and, and, and the R52, but I actually moved personally away from that role to a different role about a year ago, so a colleague of mine, James Scobie, is uh, now the product manager for, for the R52, but I kicked it off and uh, it was a really fun project to be working on. So it's with really, a, a great team of engineers. It's a really fun industry to work in. Uh, it's got to be fun, right? That, oh. That's why you don't want to retire. It's, it's just... <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I've got some golf clubs, but I, I don't know what to do with them. And, uh, um, yeah, it's such a buzz. I mean, just, just being here. I mean, look around you. Look at this stuff. It's just fabulous. And, and, and the young people and the interest and um, the whole buzz around this show, the conference. It's, um, yeah, the why, why, would you, why would you want to leave? <laughs> the Cortex-R processors are in uh, hundreds of millions of billions of devices. Uh, like, there's, there's many, many, it goes in cars, it goes into controller, uh, which well, um, uh, no, I'll answer that question very, very clearly. Actually, if you, if you want to look at the Cortex-R as a range, in terms of volumes, it probably comes third behind the, the Cortex-A so-called applications processors that are in everybody's uh, cell phone and the Cortex-M mainstream microcontroller mark, uh, 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 processor cores that are in, um, you know, pretty much everybody's uh, uh, catalogue microcontrollers and many things besides. So Cortex-R, um, you know, in, you know uh, when you break down the pie chart of the volumes of all the CPUs we ship, um, that, that comes as, 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 as the third one, but nonetheless, it's still a very substantial uh, quantity of cores, of course. And it's going to be exciting and uh, cool when uh, uh, Masayoshi-san says there's going to be a trillion uh, ARM processors shipped by 2035. Uh, that sounds like a great, great vision for the company, right? I agree with that, absolutely. I mean, Masayoshi-san, he has got wonderful, he is a visionary. And, you know, ARM has always been a visionary company. And I think um, for us to be working with him and, and vice versa is, um, is, 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 is definitely a great thing to have happened for, for both of us.